Good afternoon and welcome into a very dreary Youngstown, Ohio here today as we are just about ready for a non-conference women's lacrosse matchup between the Youngstown State Penguins and the Longwood Lancers. I'm Anthony Romo joined by my partner John Ostopowitz today. John, both teams with some tough starts coming into the season. Youngstown State 0-5 coming into today. Longwood is 0-4, but I think that has to give players on both sides a lot of motivation thinking, hey, we have a chance to win this game today. Both teams are struggling, but the winner today could get a lot of momentum as they head towards the rest of their season. Yeah, Romo, and you're absolutely right. Both teams looking for their first win of the season, but when you look at the schedules both of these teams have had, they've had some tough opponents, especially with you know the Lancers having Kennesaw State and the Penguins not only facing Cincinnati, but Ohio State as well. Yeah, and Youngstown State playing Oregon as well to open up the season. The Penguins, these last few years, they've really tried to get themselves prepared for Mid-American Conference play with a very tough non-conference schedule. Um, and along with themselves, they played somewhat of a MAC schedule themselves. Back-to-back -back MAC teams they'll play, they dropped a very tough game against Kent State their last time out. We'll touch more on that ball game as the broadcast ensues. But Starters are out onto the field. We are ready to get things going here today with our opening draw. Like we mentioned, a dreary day here today in Youngstown. Rain's been falling. It's kind of an ugly weather day, 50 degrees. Rain will probably fall at a steady rate throughout most of the game. But both teams, one of these teams today, in about two hours will have their first win of the season. Head official, getting the ball ready to go. And we are about ready to get things going. Opening draw control will go to the Penguins. So Youngstown State will have the first possession here today. The Penguins led by first year head coach and Rob Harris. They're looking to get off to a hot start here today. I think I, whichever team gets out to the lead and starts to put pressure on the opponent will have a lot of momentum as the game ensues because when you get out in front, it's a lot easier to play in the rain than when you're losing, John. Yeah, and it's going to be, a, you know, you're going to talk about offense a lot more. Both of these teams, you know, they have had some tough schedules and not a lot of offensive scoring, especially for the Penguins. They're going to try and get that under control, but... For the Lancers, it's going to be a game of defense. Don't you know? rely on your goalie too heavily. Allow your defenders to kind of work it for you. Katie Grottenthaler with it for Youngstown. Say nice spin move inside. Shots a little bit high, but YSU will keep the possession. After this Penguins possession, we'll look at the starters for both sides here today. Callie Vaudry with it. Excuse me, that was Nia Stahl. Youngstown State trying to get past this Longwood defense, but they're doing a good job collapsing when Youngstown State trying to get inside close to the goal. It's been a great defensive possession here to start it off for the Lancers. Just 13 seconds remain on the shot clock for Youngstown State. It looks like Vaudry was hit on that one. You could see her favoring her mouth just a little bit on that. It looks like she was hit by the stick. Vaudry set up to the left of the goal. When we get the okay to go, looks like she's going to pass it off. Back underway, and she'll pass it back out to Grottenthaler. Just eight seconds on the shot clock. Why she's going to have to get something up. Driving inside, pass behind the net. I don't know if the Penguins know how much time's on the shot clock. They're just going to throw it away and get themselves back on defense. That's a great start defensively if you're Longwood and if you're Coach Kyler Ferguson. You have to be really excited with how your team started the game off defensively. Yeah, and for the Penguins, their offense, I, Romo, I think you were right. I don't think they knew how much time was left on that shot clock. But again, you have to be aware, and it's all about knowing where you are in the positioning to be able to go out and get that. Helfenbein's pass for Tucci. A little bit off the mark. They couldn't connect. That'll be a turnover, and Youngstown State will get it back. This is a Penguins team that had a lot of turnover from last season. New head coach. A lot of their starters from last season departed from the program. A lot of them went to bigger schools, and a lot of them are playing very well at their bigger schools. Especially with uh, Calandra Ryan going to Pitt. A lot of you know big schools. Coastal Carolina is another one. Just a lot of different 
you know, opportunities for these athletes. Speaking of Coastal Carolina, that well, you're talking about Aaron Clark who transferred out. Katie Grottenthaler wearing the number 10 that Aaron Clark used to wear. But Youngstown State will turn it over right there in the offensive foul. So long will to get it back. A little bit of a sloppy start to today's action. Both teams trying to get settled in. Like we mentioned, rainy, cold here today. It's not the most pristine conditions. But at the end of the day, a lot of these players would much rather be playing than practicing. Yeah, but either way, it's nice to be outside, especially for lacrosse. Get that atmosphere. It's way different than being outdoors than it is inside. Yeah, most definitely. This is the second home game of the season for Youngstown State. Their home opener was against Ohio State. That was inside the Watson and Trestle training site. This is their first game outdoors here at Farmers National Bank Field. We have a collision right at the ball. Youngstown State's defender and Mia Stahl a little bit too close. And she connected with the body of Riley McDonald of Longwood. McDonald gets it back. McDonald's been the top offensive producer this season for the Lancers. I don't know if that was a shot that was deflected, but a one over the net. Lancers will keep it. This is their first real opportunity to get, get it past the Youngstown State goalie and Paige Borkowski. Seven seconds on the shot clock. McDonald had a lot of space, but she couldn't field the pass. That'll be a turnover. The Penguins will get it back. Now let's meet the starters here today. First for the Penguins, we mentioned Paige Borkowski in goal, and then in the field, number four, Lena Cox, number 10, Katie Grottenthaler, Number 15, Mia Kuzel. Number 16, Jocelyn Fike. Number 19, Kayla Stecker. Number 21, Callie Vaudry. Number 24, Ali Garrett. Number 28, Mia Stahl. And then number 41, Emma Hoffman. Number 42, Jenna Cook. And rounding out the starting lineup is number 45, Grace Manser for the Penguins. Cook had it for a second over to Cox. And now Youngstown State is going to slow it down. Try to get some players cutting without the ball. Cook has it on the left side. As we approach 10 minutes remaining here in our opening quarter. Lena Cox with it driving in. Trying to get past the defender. She's coming off a career high four goal performance against Stetson. Weaving through the defenders. Pass behind the net. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Does Longwood have another full defensive possession? Grottenthaler driving in. Through the defense. Shot saved. Nice job defensively once again. That was Bridget Robinson with the save for the Lancers. And Robinson, a freshman in the cage. I have a foul over the back on Allie Garrett. That's going to be a yellow card. Try to reach over the shoulder of the Lancer with her stick as we're going to take another look right here at this shot by Grottenthaler that was saved. Nice job by Robinson. Let's meet the starters now for Longwood. In the field, number one, Ellie Rumbaugh. Number three, Zenny Newsom, number 11, Holly Hill. We talked a lot about Riley McDonald so far, number 13. Number 16, Julia Koenig. Number 19, Claire Libby. Number 21, Lily Stallman. Number 23, Sophia Passa. Number 26, Miranda Helfenbein. Number 33, Kirsten Jackson. Number 34, Madison Cook. And in goal is number 50, Bridget Robinson. Still 0-0. Both teams with some good defensive possessions early on kind of stagnating the other team's offense. Some nice quick passing by the Lancers. And they'll get the first shot and the first goal. Who else, John, but Riley McDonald? And Riley McDonald having herself a great season so far. That was just nice execution again. Reading where the defense was, found an open lane, and just a nice passing game by the Lancers. And they have looked efficient all season long in the passing game to find wide open lanes and McDonald just capitalized on it. I must say it's been that connection this season between McDonald and Emily Kate Smith who had the assist for McDonald. That's her team leading 10th goal of the year. And for Kate Smith, that's her team leading ninth assist of the year. The next highest assist total for Longwood is McDonald herself who has three. So Emily Kate Smith has been a great facilitator for this Longwood offense early on this season. 21 assists for the Lancers. I mean, this whole team, you want to talk about facilitation. Everybody on this team can find wide open anybody and make a play. Draw control won by the Lancers. Kirsten Jackson has it on the far side of the field. They're going to look to add on to this lead, but a nice job defensively by the Penguins of batting that pass away. But Longwood will keep possession. That was Grace Manter who came flying in like a free safety. 
deflecting that pass away. A shot off the stick of Borkowski, and Youngstown State will get it. I'll tell you what, John. There's a lot of Division I lacrosse teams across the country. Paige Borkowski may be the most busy so far this season. Last time out against Stetson, Borkowski set a new single-game program record with 20 saves, but she faced 62 shots in that ball game. Yeah, Romo, and on you know the season already, Borkowski, although she faced that many shots in that game, she has faced 201 shots on the year. And when you talk about defense, that kind of relies on this team's defenders. You know, that forces your goalie to not only take a lot of shots, but that forces her to save a lot as she has allowed 93 goals. But again, your defense that is pushing, that allows that to open up. But again, she has had an amazing season so far. Good look inside, a nice save by Robinson. Loose ball on the ground, and Robinson will come up with it in her stick. Youngstown State had a golden opportunity right in front of the cage, but they could not convert. And you know, John, with the transfer portal being as big as it is today in college sports, we talked about how Youngstown State had a lot of roster turnover from last season. You know, it might not be a good thing on paper that Borkowski faced that many shots, but there's a lot of new players on the field who are gaining collegiate experience with every game. And if Youngstown State is able to retain a lot of these players for the next three, four years, I think it's really going to benefit down the line for a lot of these girls to be getting a lot of experience early on. And they're starting to build a really good goalkeeper here in Youngstown. Well, that's what Youngstown wants to do, especially with Coach Harris. He wants to build a program, and that's what he's starting to do, getting a lot of new incoming freshmen, sophomores, building them up and you know retaining them and keeping them. This program is going to flourish here in the next coming years. That was another good look for Riley McDonald, but that was saved by Borkowski. The pass to the near side. That pass was intended for Mia Stahl. But a nice job defensively on that end by Sophia Passa to kind of just get her stick in the way of the pass. And Youngstown State couldn't complete it. That'll be a turnover. We've seen a lot of turnovers early on, but still just a 1-0 to Longwood lead over halfway through our first quarter. Lancers with another possession. So far, one goal on three shots. Youngstown State is still goalless on four shots. Just under 60 seconds on the shot clock, so the Lancers can settle down. They've done a good job early on moving without the ball, trying to find an open teammate. That pass inside for the cutting Lancer was a little bit too strong. And we're going to have a double team, but nice job by... Youngstown State's Kayla Stecker evading the double team, and the Penguins will get it back. And they're going to push it right down the middle of the field. Grace run with it. She'll pass it off now. Another opportunity for Youngstown State. Shear's going to pass it to Cox, who's going to pass it over to the corner. Five and a half minutes to go here in our opening quarter. Both teams looking for their first victory on the season. Run. Cut off by a double team. She'll pass it back out. Nice first step. The shot and the goal. The Penguins get their first goal of the day courtesy of Ava Kreutzer. Kreutzer coming off a good game the last time out for the Penguins and their loss against Stetson as we take another look right here. Like I said, she had a good first step getting past Madison Cook and Kreutzer finds the back of the net. Kreutzer, one of those young players on this year's team, only a freshman out of Lancaster, New York, but she's putting together a good freshman season. That's her sixth goal. Yeah, and for Kreutzer, when you look back at that play, that was just a nice cut, being able to get around the defense again because the Longwood defense, there was a double team on the far right side that allowed the left side to open up, and that was a nice opportunity for Kreutzer. All tied up at one now. That'll take us to our first break of the day. Defensive battle early on, Youngstown State and Longwood looking for their first wins of the season. Thanks everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Champion Insurance of Austintown, in Austintown, if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Well, good luck. 
You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. Five minutes, 12 seconds remain in our opening quarter of today's matchup between the Youngstown State Penguins and the Longwood Lancers. Anthony Romo, John Ostopowitz back on the call. Mia Stahl for Youngstown State. Kirsten Jackson for Longwood. On our next draw, Youngstown State goal by Ava Kreutzer tied it up, sent us to our first media timeout. The ball is still on the turf, and Longwood, it looks like they will control the draw. You know, we were talking about it pregame, John. I was thinking one of the keys of victory for either side here today would be the team that controls more draws on the day. They're both getting kind of controlled easily in the draw control category on the season. Longwood, 34 draw controls compared to 61 for their opponents. Youngstown State themselves have 61 draw controls this season, but their opponents have 100. So you figure coming in today, the team that was able to kind of see more offensive possessions than Usual so far this season was going to have a good opportunity, and Longwood and Kirsten Jackson are doing a good job here in the first quarter of that. They've stepped up in a big way. Nice pass inside, a good look, a shot just a bit wide. That was a golden opportunity for Sophia Passa, but the or the Lancers, excuse me, have another chance. Passes over to Tucci, trying to work right outside the crease. 44 seconds on the shot clock. Youngstown State thought they forced a turnover, but a little bit too physical was Kayla Stecker of the Penguins. Looks like we're going to have a free position opportunity here. The first of the day. Actually, excuse me, a little bit too far outside. That's not a free position attempt. Lancers, they don't take too many free position shots this season. There was a shot inside right there that was off once again from Libby. That was the Lancers' fifth shot here of the first quarter. Still only one goal. They'll have another chance here. 25 seconds on the shot clock. The Lancers are usually very cautious when taking shots. 77 on the season so far. But again, they've been taking a lot here in this game. Tucci hits the turf. Stall trying to push her out with the stick. That was a foul. A whipping shot inside that was saved by Borkowski. Tell you what, John, it takes a lot of skill to be a lacrosse goalie because I couldn't even see that pass come or that shot coming out of the stick. But Borkowski was able to put her stick up and save it. Well, for Borkowski, again, it's just for any goalie, whether it be soccer or lacrosse, it's all about focusing mentally and knowing where that ball is. And you got to give credit to them. And you also got to think about the rain playing a factor as well, maybe obstructing the visibility a little bit. Had a steady rain that will probably continue for most of the action here today. 53, 53 degrees it was at our first draw. Feels like 50, which temperature-wise, it's great here for March in Youngstown. But we could do without the rain. Danny Emler has it for the Penguins. She'll pass it off to the left side. Longwood's defense has played excellent. Here in the opening quarter, nice in and out move by Cox, driving inside, ground ball shot, finds the back of the net. That'll be a goal for Youngstown State. The Penguins taking their first lead of the day. Lena Cox, the freshman phenom, as we take another look right here, stutter step, weaves in and out of the three defenders, puts it on the ground, bounces it past the goalie in Robinson. Penguins have their first lead. 
And Romo, what an outstanding play there again. It feels like announcers janks a little bit. You were just talking yeah. about the defense for Longwood, and all of a sudden it kind of broke down a little bit. You had three defenders out in front, but there was nobody in front of the goalie to help for reinforcements, and that allowed Cox to get in there and get another goal, which, you know, it's 11 now. As a freshman, you know, at a collegiate level, we've talked about it a lot, high school to collegiate level. It's tough, but her transition has been as smooth as it can be. Tell you what, Youngstown State has been through a couple head coaches over these first few years of the program's history, but whichever head coach it is, they always seem to find a freshman splash. The first year of program history, which was my freshman year, um, Lauren Ottensmeyer was excellent for the Penguins. She's now playing at Cincinnati, a team that Youngstown State played a few weeks ago. And then Natalie Kalandra Ryan two years ago could have been the Mid-American Conference Player of the Year in my eyes, but she won Freshman of the Year. I don't know if they were going to give it, give both Freshman and Player of the Year to the same player. She led the conference in goals over 60 on the season. She's now at Pitt, and now Lena Cox is that new Freshman splash. But I think the Penguins have a few of them this year. We're starting to see them on the field as they gain this collegiate experience as Robinson going out of the goal to be able to pick off that pass and cause the turnover. One minute and change remaining here in our opening quarter. Longwood looking to tie it up. Stallman drives right down the middle of the field before she passes it off. Now back to Lily Stallman. Shot clock essentially turned off. There's 63 seconds remaining on and just 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Nice pass inside, the shot and the goal. A nice answer from the Lancers. Emily Kate Smith finds the back of the net. So we take another look right here. Kate Smith was wide open. Look at her moving, getting the defender out of her sight in front of the net, and she capitalizes. Longwood ties it up at two. Already we've seen a lot of back and forth between both of these teams. Again, we've talked about the defense. We've seen a whole lot of offense. And for both of these teams, that's really what they needed, especially for the Lancers. They've had a lot of close games with not a lot of offensive production to get it done, you know, towards the end of the stretch. But for Youngstown State, their defense is going to have to step up if they want to kind of start to pull away just a little bit. That's Emily Kate Smith's third goal of the season, her first since the season opener against Liberty when she had two goals in that matchup. Kate Smith, senior out of Roswell, Georgia. 23 seconds remain in the first quarter. We'll see if the Penguins have one final push here to try to regain the lead before the end of the quarter. Get it over midfield. Passes over to Mia Stahl. Now with it is Peck. Why is she with an opportunity if they can get the pass up? Cox passes it inside. Four seconds remaining. Chance for the Penguins. Cox can't field the pass. And she's not able to get a shot off. That'll take us to the end of the opening quarter. Highly competitive first 15 minutes between Youngstown State and Longwood. Both teams netting two goals. We'll see if either team is able to build an edge when we come back with second quarter action here at Farmers National Bank Field. You ready to meet the latest addition to the family? The money you saved us with auto owners helped make it all possible. It really is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Excuse me? Third best thing. Third best thing. Auto owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Siebert Keck Insurance in Youngstown if auto owners make sense for you. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Mercy Health, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Mercy Health, primary care for the universe of you. Visit mercy.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other, 
because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Welcome back inside Youngstown State University's Farmers National Bank Field. Anthony Romo, John Ostopowitz back on the call for this weekend matchup between Youngstown State and Longwood. Both teams, two goals apiece through the first 15 minutes. The Lancers goal scored by Emily Kate Smith. The other goal scored by Claire Libby. Youngstown State's two goals scored by Lena Cox and Ava Kreutzer. Second quarter action about to get going. Our apologies. I, I thought Riley McDonald scored the first goal for Longwood early on in the first quarter. I guess we were wrong. <laughs> I thought I saw a 13. It must have been a 19. But anyways, we're all tied up at two. Both teams back out at midfield. Ready to get things going here for a second quarter of action. It'll be Jackson for Longwood and Cook for Youngstown State on the opening draw of the second quarter. Fight for the possession, and it'll go the way of the Lancers. Game reset from our first quarter. Longwood, two goals on seven shots, five of them on goal. Youngstown State, two goals on six shots, four of them on goal. It was a good first quarter for both of our goalkeepers and Brooke Robinson, or Bridget Robinson, excuse me, for Longwood and Paige Borkowski for Youngstown State. Faced a good amount of shots in the first quarter, but both goalkeepers did a good job of keeping it out, outside of the cage. Lancers with this first possession, slowing the offense down, getting into his set. You can see the continuous cutting from players without the ball. Nice job defensively by the Penguins of not letting the Lancers get too close to the cage. 40 seconds remain on the shot clock. Possession in the stick of Holly Hill. She'll pass it inside. And we're going to have a foul called on Youngstown State. Not giving enough space to Emily Kate Smith, who had possession of the ball. So Kate Smith will not have the first free position opportunity for either team here today. Mentioned Longwood as a team. Six for eight on free position shot attempts this season. The shot and the goal. Make it seven for nine and give Kate Smith her second goal of the season or of the game, fourth goal of the season for Emily Kate Smith. As we take another look right here, just put it right under the stick of Borkowski. Right between the legs. That There's was a nutmeg. power. You could see just the power on Emily Kate Smith, just how she hammered that stick down and even had a little bounce to kind of roll into the back of the cage, but a great effort by the Longwood Lancers. So Longwood takes their second lead of the afternoon. They score the first goal in the first quarter to make it one to zero. Penguins answer with two goals. Now the Lancers, they're on a two goal spurt themselves. Three to two is our score. Youngstown State quickly changing their player on the draw. On the draw. Longwood controls it once again. The Lancers now five draw controls to two for Youngstown State today. Nice pass up the field that is stolen by the Penguins. Nice job by Kayla Stecker, but she loses possession. Loose ball up in the air. Who's going to come down with it? They're going to keep possession with the Penguins. That was a great job by Stecker, seeing the pass from across the field coming her way, and she was able to get in front of it and cause the turnover for YSU. Now for the Lancers, they had an opportunity to scoop up that ground ball and head the other way because, again, it was a turnover kind of all over the place, but they had an opportunity to pick it up, but, again, nobody could capitalize on that. And a goal for the Penguins. YSU quickly answers with their first goal of the second quarter. Back and forth we go. And we're going to watch that again on the side, trying to figure out who got Emma it. Emma Hoffman it right like. in front of the, the goal. Her second goal of the season, her first of the day. Nice assist by Allie Garrett. And we are all tied up at three. And Young again, the offense is... Firing on all cylinders back and forth. And we saw that against Kent State when Longwood versed them on March 4th. And it was a back and forth matchup, unfortunately, it came down to the last second. But 13 to 12 against a Mac opponent, I mean, 
That's as good as it gets, especially for them. Youngstown State finally able to kind of play on their home field, wake up in their own beds on game day. The Penguins coming in today 0-5 on the season, only one home game, four on the road. Their game earlier this week was all the way across the country in Florida. Sure was nice, nicer weather than we have here today. That was a loss against Stetson. This is the first of a three-game home stand for Youngstown State. Long one after today, they will also return home, but they've played two home games out of their first four this season. Bridget Robinson, two saves thus far today for Longwood. Paige Borkowski has three for the Penguins. We're going to have a free position opportunity for the Lancers here, working from the right side of the net. Opportunity will be had by Riley McDonald. McDonald, the team's leading scorer on the season with nine goals, make it 10. We know for sure that was Riley McDonald on that one. We she sure nets did. her first goal of the day. That'll make it four to three Longwood. Free position shot was set up by a foul by Youngstown State's Caitlin Donardo. And McDonald was ready to go right under the crossbar and over the stick of Paige Borkowski. And the offenses are starting to heat up here early on in the second quarter. And again, Riley McDonald, a nice side shot on that with the stick. And those free position opportunities... The Lancers are taking advantage of them. 12-27 to go here in the second quarter. Jade Shear for the Penguins now on this draw. It's still Kirsten Jackson for Longwood. And the draw will be controlled once again by Longwood. They continue to dominate the draw control category, seven to two now here today. But gotta give Youngstown State credit. They're able to cause some turnovers as they have a chance to get one right here and they do. Another one forced. That one was by Jade Shear and she's gonna push it right down the middle of the field. Shear weaving past the defenders and now she'll slow it down and pass it out. Now into the game for the Penguins, Brooke Peck checking back in. And YSU is going to look to take advantage of that turnover. Longwood has six of them today. YSU has four. That shot saved by Bridget Robinson. But it stays out. Can either team pick it up? Looks like the Penguins will. Penguins trying to send a lot of shots towards the lower part of the goal. We'll take another look right here at the save by Robinson. Goes to her side. Youngstown State came in. Another shot was saved. And then after the scrum, YSU was able to retain the possession. Cox will pass it over to the corner. Youngstown State, 45 seconds on the shot clock. They're going to pass around the perimeter and try to make their move. Now the Penguins will be set up with a free position attempt working from the far side of the net. It's an opportunity for YSU to tie this game back up. Driving inside, the shot and the goal. That one was way too easy for Grace Rund. Who gets her first goal of the day? So we take another look right here. Run, cool, calm, and collected, driving in. Kind of dangling it past the goalie's stick. And then she finds the easy corner of the net. Why she ties this one back up at four. And again, caught Longwood's goalie off guard, Bridget Robinson. And that was a great execution by Run, being able to go to the far right side, get it off the shot of the stick. And again, Going up against a freshman goalie who has logged already four starts for Longwood. We've seen a lot of different goalie play for the Lancers this season, trying to find a fit that works, and Robinson so far has been that fit. Run now making it five consecutive games with a goal. She's second on the team with seven goals now on the season. She had a hat trick against Ohio State back on February 16th. Now she's had one goal in each of the last four games. But she's looking to add on to that one goal total here today. Rhonda Freshman out of Rochester, New York. 
Seems like Rochester, New York has been a hotbed for Youngstown State Lacrosse through this program's infancy. With it is Callie Vaudry. She'll pass it off to Lena Cox. Longwood defender lost her footing for a second, but she's able to get back to her feet. Pass in front. It was a risky pass with three defenders there. Why she was able to come up and have a look for a second, and now they'll still be able to retain possession. 48 seconds on the shot clock. 10 minutes, 15 seconds to go here in, their, in our opening half. Penguins looking to reclaim the lead. Driving on the right side and trying to spin past the defender. Nice pass inside to Cox and she'll score. What a nice play there, especially that assist to Cox and just finding an open lane. And again, you could see it right there. Backspin on the far left and the assist there from by Molly the Sheridan. Yeah. Sheridan, a junior, one of the more experienced team players on the team now. She assists Cox on her second goal of the day and her 12th of the season. Lena Cox, she kind of sprouted onto the roster way after everyone else did this season, but she's playing like she's been here for four years. Lena Cox all started out in that season opener against Oregon, where she had a hat trick with three goals, and she had a career high four goals last time out against Stetson on Monday, as it seems our rain is picking up just a little bit. And this is where the control and the cradling is going to come into play. Because again, when you have conditions like this, it's going to be tough to control the stick down low. And that's where turnovers are really going to start to come into play. Definitely, as we are now under 10 minutes remaining here in our second quarter. Why is she on top? Five to four. And they have another chance to add on to this lead right here. Cox with it, just scored her second goal of the day. Tied for a game high with two goals. Emily Kate Smith of Longwood also has two goals. Allie Garrett with it, working on the left side, trying to spin past the defender, but a good job defensively by Longwood. I believe that was Jordan Fitzgerald who jarred it free. And Libby was able to scoop up the ground ball there for the Lancers. Sandy Newsom is going to pass it off. Ariana Tucci with it. Longwood's been scoreless for a little bit of time. Youngstown State's on a little run of their own right now. Holly Hill working with it. She'll pass it back in front of the net. Lancers lost a tough one, 13 to 12 against Kent State on Thursday as they continue their tour here of Northeast Ohio. 45 seconds on the shot clock. Ball in the stick of Passa. She'll pass it off. Now Emily Kate Smith will pass it back out. Riley McDonald with it. Trying to work past the defender, but Youngstown State's doing a good job defensively. And Mia Stahl forced a tough shot, but the Lancers will keep possession. Driving in the shot over the head of Borkowski and into the back of the net. Sophia Passa with her first goal of the day on her third shot. And Longwood ties it up at five. We'll take another look right here. Passa using her height to get past the defender. Sneaking it right in the top right corner of the cage. Passa's first goal of the day. And Longwood has tied it at five. Yeah, that was a nice assist by Holly Hill on that one. And again, Passa adding another goal, nine total goals on the season for her. Again, this team has a lot of different scorers. It doesn't matter who you put on this team. They're going to go out there. They're going to make a play, whether it be making assists or making goals. They can do it all. Passa continues that kind of race for the team leading goals with their teammate Riley McDonald. Both of them have one goal so far today. McDonald, 10 on the season. Passa with nine. Cook and Jackson on the draw. Control will be favored with the Penguins. And Jenna Cook is going to rush it down towards Longwood's end of the field. Under eight minutes to go here in our second quarter. Anthony Romo, John Ostopowitz on the call here today for this 
Saturday afternoon women's lacrosse matchup. YSU looking to reclaim the lead. Penguins working behind the net now. A lot of passing for the Penguins. You've seen a lot of different players have it already, looking for an opportunity. Got to give credit to Longwood's defense, though. A lot of passing from the Penguins, and they haven't really had anyone open up. But they're going to have a free position attempt here far on the right side here from the goal. Well, for the Penguins, they were hoping that the Lancers' defense would break down because when you start to give it to different players, that allows one of them to make a play. But again, great effort by the Lancers. Brooke Peck will have the free position opportunity. It's going to be a tough angle to come in and shoot. We'll see if she decides to pass it off, and she will. Over to Kreutzer. She has a goal today. She passes it off now. Jenna Cook working straight away from the net. Under 40 seconds on the shot clock for the Penguins, so still a lot of time to get something going here. Kreutzer now with it, trying to get past the defender. She has the leverage, and she has the goal. Ava Kreutzer with her second goal of the afternoon. Ties her for a game high. And that'll take us to immediate timeout. 6.55 to go in the second quarter. Youngstown stayed on top. Six to five. Thanks everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Champion Insurance of Austintown, in Austintown, if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Sports Complex here at Farmers National Bank Field at Youngstown State University. The Penguins on top of Longwood 6-5 to five as we are over halfway through here in, our first, or here in our first half. I can confirm we'll have to switch in the live stats. The first goal was definitely scored by Riley McDonald for Longwood. I'm looking at the replay here from our broadcast. So McDonald actually... With two goals here in the first half. Claire Libby does not have a goal for Longwood. I thought we were crazy, John, but we are not. <laughs> well, that's nice to know that that has been confirmed that we are not crazy. But again, you know, the <laughs> human error, we've talked about it a lot. If that is indeed the way it is. But yeah, we'll talk about that at halftime. It's a we'll lot, yeah. Fixed. So 6.38 to go here in the second quarter. Penguins on top, 6-5. to five. Longwood with the possession. Pass back out to Emily Kate Smith. Her pass back towards the middle was deflected for a second. Can the Penguins force a turnover? They cannot. Pass was initially was intended for Kendra DiFilippo. She didn't field it cleanly, but she did a good job staying with the play. Young Sansei was trying to pick that up, and she kind of pushed it away with her stick. So Long was able to retain possession. Nice pass inside, and that's going to be a goal for the Lancers. That was a bang-bang play in the truest essence of it. We'll take one more look right here. Pass inside, look inside, and the goal scored for the Lancers. That was just a nice look as well, and, and you saw, again, the quick play. Holly Hill. Who else? Yeah. Finding the back of the net. Hill had an her assist. first goal of the day. Yep. Second 
or excuse me, sixth goal of the season. Mm -hmm. She has a goal now today to go along with two assists. So Hill, over 10 total points on the season. Six, go six goals, five assists. And we are all tied up at six. And Emily Kate Smith will be credited with the assist on that one as well. So she has four total points, two goals, two assists here in the first half. We knew that she was really talented passing the ball through to find the back of the net. Now she's up to 10 assists this season, but she also had those two first half goals. She's up to four goals on the season. Tied her season total coming into today. Well, with Emily Kate Smith, we've talked about the veteran presence as a senior on this team. You know, getting a lot of points, being in that attacker position. She does it all for this team. Goals, assists, disruption, you name it. She's a huge presence for this team. Rumbaugh will pass it over to the right side. Now back out to Ellie Rumbaugh. Junior out of Hickory, North Carolina. Looking to find an open teammate. Longwood's not really moving without the ball right now. They were doing such a good job of that earlier, and they're now going to start to speed it up. And another goal for Riley McDonald. That's a first half hat trick for the Lancers' leading scorer on the season. Make it 12 goals for Riley McDonald. As we take another look right here, nice job cutting inside. Got out of sight of the Youngstown State defender in Jade Shear, and she found the back of the net. And again, this Longwood offense, it is run by McDonald, and you can see, and it is very rare to get a first half hat trick. Usually you see it kind of sprinkled throughout, but it just shows you how dominant she has been in this game, and that really credits to the Youngstown State's defense. You know, when you go fast, and we've seen it a lot this season, when you really start to put the pressure on this defense, they start to break just a little bit because, you know, they are a young team. There is a lot of freshmen and sophomores, and that comes with time and coaching, and that defense will get better over the season. So Lancers back out in front 7-6, to six, and they control yet another draw. And they've now doubled the Penguins up, 10 draw controls for Longwood, just five for Youngstown State here in this first half. But I will say, John, it's been a very exciting first half so far today. Two teams that are very hungry for their first win of the season. And it would be nice for either team to get a, a well-deserved win because you see how fierce both of these teams are. They're hungry for this win because moving forward, they have a, a still a very tough schedule ahead of both of these teams. Whoever comes out on top today is definitely going to earn it. So we're under five minutes to go here in our opening half. Ball on the turf, scooped up by McDonald. Tries to cradle it past the defender. Falls out of her stick for a second, but she'll be able to retain possession for the Lancers. 38 seconds on the shot clock. McDonald loses her footing right in front of the cage. No foul called. Shot from the side, and there's another goal. And Longwood is red hot offensively. Holly Hill with another goal, her second in a span of about three minutes. So we take a look right here, Hill to the side of the net. Just sneaks it right past the stick of Borkowski in that right corner of the cage. That'll make it 8-6 to six Longwood. And they have scored the last three goals here of our second quarter. Well, Romo, that's because the Lancers have went fast. And the Penguins are unable to adjust to that because, again, the conditions. When you're going fast, it is very difficult for your defense to kind of shorten things up and allow, you know, the defense to kind of work its magic. Timeout was called by Youngstown State. Their first team called timeout. As we have this Youngstown State timeout, we're going to take a look at some of our first half highlights here from today. Longwood, the second quarter, they've been red hot shooting the ball. You take a look at that nice goal right there by Hill. She just scored our last goal of the day. The Lancers have been hot offensively. McDonald scores a goal right there. Leading scores. So far today is Riley McDonald with three goals in the first half for Longwood. Holly Hill has two. Emily Kate Smith also has two. Kate Smith, three assists to go along with those two goals. She's up to five first half points. And Longwood came in today 0-4. They'll be back home after today. They're looking to make their way home on a high note. Yeah, and if they are able to grab this victory, it would be so nice, especially to go back home, have a win, 
for this team. And, you know, the Lancers themselves, they have a lot of young players, 13 freshmen as well as 11 sophomores. So there is a lot of underclassmen. And when you look at the seniors as well, they have done a great job. And the juniors have done a great job of coaching this team. But when you look at the scoring for the Lancers, you have three separate athletes and players who have scored at least one or more goal, at least in the two category. But you've had a lot of different, you know, athletes getting involved here. And we talk about this Longwood team owned four in the season, but their last three losses have been winnable opportunities. They lost against Kennesaw State back on February 24th. That was a game that was tied at 10 heading into the fourth quarter before Kennesaw State outscored the Lancers 5-1 to one in that fourth quarter as they lost 15-11. to 11. Then on February 28th, they hosted Old Dominion. That was a game that they trailed 9-7 to seven coming into the fourth quarter, and they were scoreless in the fourth quarter, losing that one 11-7. Then we talked about Kent State just on Thursday. That was a game that was back and forth. It was tied at 10 heading into the fourth quarter, but Kent State was able to make the difference in the fourth quarter, winning that one 13-12. They made it a two-goal advantage within the last seven minutes, and it was just too little too late for Long when netted a goal with under two minutes remaining, but they could not get one more. That's how they fell to 0 and 4. Coming out of the timeout, draw control for the Penguins. And a heavy collision. That's going to be a green card given to Sophia Passa. So she'll have to take a quick seat with 4.05 remaining here in our second quarter. It's just going to be a one minute penalty. Penguins will retain the possession. YSU. Who was on top six to five at one point here in the third or in the second quarter, but they have since surrendered the last three goals to make it eight to six. Penguins now with a player up. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. Driving to the right side was Peck. We're gonna have a whistle blown. It's gonna be a foul on the Lancers, and it's gonna give Peck a free position opportunity here from a pretty decent angle. Peck looking for possibly her first goal of the day if she decides to take the shot. A pump fake driving inside. Instead, she will pass it off though. It's a selfless move there from Peck. Lena Cox will drive inside her shot off of Robinson. It'll bounce back out. Why she will keep it once again. 60 seconds on the shot clock. As the Penguins look to put an end to this Longwood scoring run here in the second quarter. Back out to Brooke Peck who will pass it at the top of the circle. Why is she driving in the shot? It's going to be a turnover. Nope, they're going to call it a goal actually. Penguins put an end to the Longwood run. That'll make it a one goal deficit for Youngstown State. As they will look once again to potentially tie this before the half. As that was Grace Rund who found the back of the net. And I was waiting for the signal up here to officially, you know, call that. But again, I saw the ball go in on the bottom right of the cage. But nice execution by Grace Rund there. It was just perfectly executed, found it. Everybody was kind of standing around looking for the call to see what it was, but benefit in the Penguins' favor on that one. Run, we mentioned freshman out of Rochester, New York. One of many freshmen who are getting some big, valuable college experience in their opening season. Run now eight goals on the season for Youngstown State. As we approach three minutes remaining here, in our opening half. Lancers will have the possession. With it is Helfenbein. Miranda Helfenbein, junior out of Queenstown, Maryland. She'll pass it off. Ellie Rumbaugh looking to pass it off to a teammate herself, and she will. Just under 70 seconds on the shot clock. We're going to have a foul on the Penguins. We 
Longwood, three different players with multiple goals here in the first half. Youngstown State, three of their own. Holly Hill will pass it back out. Now to Riley McDonald. McDonald trying to spin off a defender and get a good look. She'll now pass it over to the left side. And another goal for the Lancers. Another quick fire goal for Longwood out of nowhere. They find the back of the net with just under two minutes remaining here in our opening half. This time, it's Michaela Cook taking a quick glance, get it to the left side of the cage, pass the stick of Borkowski, and Cook, for the first time today, finds the back of the net. And for Cook as well, it looks like that is her first goal of the season, which was assisted by Riley McDonald. So again, McDonald, we've talked about her. She can not only go out and make individual plays, but she can read the field and get, you know, kind of lead her teammates to where they need to be in order to get that opportunity. You can see the celebration. That's the first career goal for Michaela Cook of her collegiate career. Cook, another freshman that's getting some playing time in today's ball game from either side. Freshman out of Houston, Texas. And we haven't given enough credit to Kirsten Jackson, who's done a great job controlling draws today. That's now Longwood's 12th draw control of the afternoon. And they've done a great job all season controlling draws. Nine to seven, Longwood looking to get to double digit goals here before the end of the half. Nice job spinning off the defender, the drive, the shot. Saved by Borkowski. Now fight for it in the corner. Possession will go to Youngstown State. So the Penguins catch a break defensively. The Lancers come up empty. Longwood, nine goals on 15 shots here in the first half. Youngstown State, seven goals on 13 shots. And that was a smart play by the Penguins to just let it roll out of play to be able to force it and go back and get an opportunity of their own. Penguins moving quickly. Longwood doing a good job defensively, kind of blanketing the YSU offense. Penguins unable to really get many open looks here in the second quarter. Pass in front of the cage on the turf. YSU will retain possession. Emler has it. It's on the turf again. Who's going to come up with it? Out of play. Possession will stay with the Penguins. 25 seconds remain here in our first half. This could be one last opportunity for the Penguins to make it a one-goal deficit heading into the break. And it's not going to be an easy one. You could see the Lancers' defense trying to be stout, and, and they get will. another save. Bridget Robinson, her sixth save of the first half. And she'll smartly hold it, pass it outside. That'll take us to halftime. Longwood with a 9-7 to seven lead over Youngstown State. That'll take us to a break. We'll have first half analysis when we return here to Farmers National Bank Field. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. You ready to meet the latest addition to the family? The money you saved us with auto owners helped make it all possible. It really is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Excuse me? Third best thing. Third best thing. Auto owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Jem Young Insurance in Canfield if auto owners make sense for you. 
You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now, you know why. Health. Suddenly, that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Mercy Health, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Mercy Health, primary care for the universe of you. Visit mercy.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. Thanks everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask the Griffith Agency in Girard if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Hello everyone, I'm John Ostapowitz, Anthony Romo here on the call as the rain continues to come down here at Farmers National Bank Field inside the Cavelli Sports Complex. Again, thanks for tuning in to us here this afternoon and we're going to jump right in to the first half stats as there was a lot to talk about, especially for the Lancers. You see 9-7, to seven. Longwood has the advantage, actually excuse me, Youngstown is trying to get back, along with 9-7, to seven, of course, but we're going to jump right into it with the assist numbers. You see the assists, six assists, a lot of opportunities for these players, for the Lancers. Riley McDonald has a hat trick in the first half. We've seen a lot of opportunities to go along with an assist. Holly Hill as well, two goals for her. And you want to look at Smith having another Two goals for her and three assists. We've seen a lot of different opportunities for the Lancers, but for Youngstown State, they have had their own fair share of opportunities. Cox having two goals as well. When you look at Ava Kreutzer having two and Run having two goals as well. So a lot of different looks. Both teams in the shot category, 15 apiece. But for Youngstown State, they have the advantage with 13 shots on goal, both of these teams very tightly contested in the first half. In the second half, we're going to look for a lot more of that, especially with both of these offenses. But we would like to see a lot more defense, especially because the Lancers, they love to go fast. They love to go back and forth. And that's what has caught the Penguins' defense off guard. And if they continue to do that, they might be able to pull away, especially when they go back and forth. And for the Lancers, they've just been able to capitalize on some opportunities. But especially moving forward, the Lancers, they have had a tough schedule. And all the games that they have played have been close, except against Liberty on February 17th. And that game, just a back and forth. But it's nice, especially for the Lancers, to have a lot of nice opportunities for a very young team, especially for the Lancers and Youngstown State, both teams that have a lot of young, you know, talent on this team. And it's all about coaching. And you're going to see a lot of that, especially in the second half, because both of these coaches for both teams are really good at those adjustments and being able to coach their defense and lead them to what they are able to do. But of course, we will be right back here and talk about more of the game and look at some of the highlights that have transpired in the first half. And we'll be right back here at Farmers National Bank Field. Yeah.
You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now, you know why. You ready to meet the latest addition to the family? The money you saved us with auto owners helped make it all possible. It really is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Excuse me? Third best thing. Third best thing. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Jem Young Insurance in Canfield if auto owners make sense for you. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now, you know why. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Mercy Health, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Mercy Health, primary care for the universe of you. Visit mercy.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. Thanks everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask the Griffith Agency in Girard if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Sports Complex. Anthony Romo, John Ostopowitz here at Farmers National Bank Field, where it's Longwood on top of Youngstown State 9-7 to as we are just under a minute away from beginning third quarter action here from this Saturday afternoon matchup between the Lancers and the Penguins. Longwood wearing their light blue road unis. Youngstown State wearing the home whites here today. John, not the best conditions. Cold, rainy, but both teams trying to make the best of this situation. They're both looking for their first win of the season, and Longwood really was able to put it to the Penguins towards the end of that second quarter. Yeah, and that was with a nice, tremendous offensive effort by them. A lot of different players getting in the scoring opportunity, having you know wide open looks, great plays, just a lot of facilitation by this team and you know they were able to find a lot of different open opponents and even make plays on that Penguins defense and of course it's just been the issue of how fast can this team be you can see the speed and the agility on the Lancers but for Youngstown State they have their own size advantage especially you know there's a lot of different players that have speed and the athleticism on that side they're able to switch at any moment. Kirsten Jackson for Longwood. Jenna Cook for Youngstown State will be on our opening draw here of the third quarter. Jackson did a tremendous job in that first half as Longwood controlled draws 12-6 to six in their favor against the Penguins. Jackson, five draw controls in our opening half. She's been on every draw so far today, while for Youngstown State, the Penguins have kind of moved players in and out. They're still trying to find a, someone they can really give the Penguins some momentum on draws. They haven't done a very good job of it here today, but they're able to control that one and they'll have first possession here of the second half. Trailing nine to seven. Why issue? They had a couple long live possessions early on in the first quarter that ended in shot clock violations. So Longwood's defense has done a good job on this end of the field. The shot and the save, nice job by Bridget Robinson. 
Saves the first shot of the second half. She is now up to seven saves here today. It's a freshman versus freshman battle in the goals for both sides. Robinson, a freshman for Longwood. Borkowski, a freshman for Youngstown State. You know, we were talking about before the broadcast started, John, that Longwood's really been kind of cycling through a few freshman goalkeepers this season. Yeah, they really have, especially when you have a lot of different options, especially, you know, knowing that there's been a lot of different turnover in looking for different opportunities in the back of the net, but Robinson proving stout here this afternoon. Pass over to Claire Libby. She'll scoop it up. Lancers now at their first possession of the second half. They did a great job moving without the ball in that second quarter. We had a push off the ball. McDonald for the Lancers hit the deck. Our official saw that. And now Riley McDonald's going to have a free position opportunity here. She already had three first half goals. She's up to 12 on the season. She's looking to add to that number right here. Great angle. We'll see if she decides to take the shot. She does. The shot and the goal. Riley McDonald picks up right where Longwood left off in the second quarter. Her fourth goal of the afternoon. Longwood in double digits now. Ten goals. They lead 10-7. to seven. And you can see right here just a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. You got Borkowski in the back and just capitalizing on it like that. Riley McDonald getting it done as easy as it possibly can be. Goal number 13 on the season for her, and she just continues to add to her total. McDonald had five goals on Thursday against Kent State. That was a season high. She's now one goal away from tying that mark. Her career high for goals in the game came last season against High Point, where she had six. She might be able to break that mark at the way she's playing here. Might be able to break it in the third quarter. <laughs> she's electric. Most definitely. And we knew coming in today that McDonald was going to be the player to watch offensively for the Lancers, and she has lived up to the bill. This was a game where YSU had led 6-5, to five, but ever since that, Longwood has outscored the Penguins 5-1. to 5-2, to two, excuse me. They had led 5-4. to four. Lancers with possession once again. YSU a little bit too physical behind the net. Longwood will retain possession. Emily Kate Smith with it, working behind the net. Emily Kate Smith has two goals of her own so far today to go along with three assists. McDonald with it. She's looking for the open teammate. She'll get it over to Rumbaugh. Thirty seconds on the shot clock. Another shot, but a save. Paige Borkowski's been busy so far today. That's her fourth save of the day. Borkowski is the lone goalkeeper on this Youngstown State roster. As a freshman, she's going to have to, some games may feel like she's going through the ringer. But like we said, it's going to build great experience for Borkowski, who's had some great performances this season. You go back to Monday's loss against Stetson. Youngstown State didn't come out on top. But Borkowski had a program record 20 saves in that game. So she was trying to do her part. Why she fell 21 to 13 in Dillon, Florida. But again, it's growing pains. You're going to go through some of that adversity. Shot by the Penguins, saved by Robinson. We talked about Longwood being in some opportunities to potentially win games, but you see where the experience starts to hurt. That goes with Youngstown State, you know, in that game against Stetson. It was a 14-13 game after two consecutive goals from the Penguins with 13-38 remaining in the fourth quarter. But why she went cold the rest of the day and Stetson scored the final seven goals of that game to pull away 21-13. As we are almost five minutes 
into our third quarter. Longwood has scored the lone goal so far here of the second half. Riley McDonald scored it. They're looking to extend this lead out to four goals here on this possession. They'll slow it down. They'll now work it behind the net and we'll see if anyone's gonna cut towards the goal. McDonald will, she couldn't get the pass and why she will force the turnover. That one's picked up by Kayla Stecker. And that was a nice opportunity by Stecker there. Longwood going too quick and it fell out of the stick and nice opportunity by Stecker there to provide for the Penguins. Brooke Peck fields the pass. And then we're gonna have a yellow card given to the Lancers. This one's given to Madison Cook. So we've seen a lot of different fouls on the Lancers. We've seen a green card, now a yellow card. We've seen a lot of different, you know, extracurricular activities, I just, you know, you would say. But again, it's the physicality for both of these teams. You've been seeing it, and they've just been making a lot of plays and getting in the, the wrong end of the conversation. You know what's crazy? I don't know how deep we can dig into the college lacrosse record book, but this may be the first game in the history of collegiate lacrosse where there are three players with the last name Cook and they're all spelled in different ways. Well, that's, that's the beauty of it all. You know, especially in college, you see a lot of different names. It may be, you know, that sound the same, but they're all different. And again, that's, that's what it's about. It's history today. <laughs> it might be a groundbreaking game. We're going to have a timeout called by Youngstown State. So 60 seconds remain on the shot clock. Head coach Rob Harris wants to talk it over with his team real quick. That'll take us to a timeout. Youngstown State looking to close this deficit. They trail 10 to 7 here in quarter number three. Thanks everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Champion Insurance of Austintown in Austintown if Auto Owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Yeah. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Sports Complex. Youngstown State with possession, coming out of a team called timeout by Coach Rob Harris. They're going to be working behind the Longwood net with 60 seconds on the shot clock. Penguins trailing 10 to 7 in today's ball game. It was tied 2 to 2 at the end of the first quarter, but ever since then, Longwood outscored the Penguins 7 to 5 in the second, and they've scored the lone goal so far here in our third quarter. Why is you looking to put an end to that though? Right here. Pass inside, the shot and the goal. Right on cue, Ava Kreutzer with her third goal of the day. Hat trick for the freshman. And Youngstown State's on the board here in the second half. Yeah, that was a nice execution as well. But how about that timeout by Coach Harris? And that was perfect. You know, talked it over, had an opportunity to talk it, talk about the offense, and they got it going. Whatever Coach Harris said, it worked. It really lit a fire for this offense, and we're going to see it moving forward, what it did. So we took a look at the replay there. We saw Kreutzer popping up right at the edge of the circle. 
had the inside leverage on defender Zenny Newsom. And Kreutzer used her height to find the back of the net. Yeah, and the assist by Brooke Peck as well. And again, the Penguins have a lot of different players who can read and find an open, you know, teammate. And Peck made it count. YSU controls the draw. Maybe a little bit of momentum now for the home side. And that's Molly, what they need. Molly Sheridan driving down the left side, near side of the field. Shona work behind the goal. Passes it off to Lena Cox. Eight minutes, 27 seconds remain here in our third quarter. Kreutzer, the leading goal scorer today for YSU with those three goals. We're going to have a foul called on the Lancers. It's going to set YSU up on the near side. Brooke Peck has it. We'll see if she can find a cutting teammate here. She'll pass it out. I will reset. 52 seconds on the shot clock, so a lot of time to work here for the Penguins. Emler looking for an open teammate. She'll just hand it off. We've talked about Bridget Robinson a lot today in the goal. She has eight saves today for the Lancers. Can she make it nine? That shot's wide. Why she will retain possession with 30 seconds on the shot clock. That was an impressive shot as well. Really at, off the back of the foot to the side. and Emler's pass. Bounces. Fight for it. Why she will keep it. Just 13 seconds to work with though. Pass back in front to Emler. Can she get a good look? She cannot. Is this another shot clock violation forced by the Longwood defense? One second. That's it. Well, they forced the turnover anyways. So no shot clock violation, but... That's what you could call it. And now, instead of having the horn go off, they get the easy turnover, and they can push it the other direction. This is a nice scoring opportunity for the Lancers. If they can find an open, or may just make a play like that. Easy play made. Holly Hill with the goal for Longwood. That's her third of the day. And she is now the third different player today that has collected a hat trick. Second for Longwood. Just put it right under the stick of Borkowski. So nice, nice job play. there by Longwood. Yeah. They answer the Youngstown State goal a few minutes prior, and the lead is back up to three. And again, Holly Hill does it all. Goal number eight for her this season. And again, we're going to start talking about a lot of different opportunities here for the Lancers, a lot of different you know, players are going to step up here. Back out at midfield for another draw. Youngstown State's had the upper hand here in the second half. Controlling draws. We'll see if that can continue. It will not. Longwood's able to get possession. Eleven to eight is our score. Both teams, like we mentioned earlier, looking for their first win of the season here today. Longwood lost to another Mid-American Conference school in Kent State earlier this week. Nice cut inside the shot and the goal. Another one for the Lancers. And the lead is now up to four. We'll take another look right here. Nice drive inside by Ariana Tucci. Penguins defender hits the turf. Tucci finds the back of the net. So again, everybody getting involved. And Tucci, nice play there. And the Lancers just keep putting it on. And goal number five for her on the season. And a lot of different scores now for the Lancers starting to make a play for this team. Tucci, five foot nine freshman of Frederick, Maryland. Is her first goal of the day. Now six different players for Long would have scored this afternoon. We're going to have a timeout called by the Lancers here with six minutes, 21 seconds remaining in our third quarter. So head coach Kyler Ferguson in her second season. 
is going to try to find a way now to retain this lead for the rest of today's action. Ferguson assisted by Dwayne Hicks and Connor Gannon. Dwayne Hicks, a familiar name. He used to be the head coach at Detroit Mercy, another Mid-American Conference school. Youngstown State led by head coach Rob Harris. He's assisted by Taylor Woolard and Hallie Bielke. Coach Bielke had to step in to that interim head coaching role for parts, well, for the tail end of last season. Youngstown State was still able to make an appearance in the Mid-American Conference Tournament. That's a conference where the top four teams qualify for the tournament. They held strong with Robert Morris, the host school, for much of the first half. Why she was leading at a point in the second quarter, but the second half, the Colonials pulled away. The Mid-American Conference is going to be a very interesting conference this year because I don't know if there's any team that necessarily stands out. And you look at Longwood side with the Big South, their women's across conference. This is a Longwood team that in second year leadership under Coach Ferguson, they're looking to kind of make a splash in conference play this season. It's another conference where no team sticks out thus far. High Point has the best record in the conference with a record of three and two. They're the lone team in the Big South that has a winning record. And the Big South has four teams that have still not gathered a win this season with Longwood being one of them. Well, the issue for both conferences is their schedule. All of their schedules for both of the conferences, especially the MAC, is tough. When you have opponents such as the University of Oregon, you have Ohio State, Kennesaw State, a lot of different, you know, Midwestern teams and even the Western side. And when you get over there, things just get difficult, especially everybody plays lacrosse out there. It just breathes lacrosse, especially with even New York. When you even think about New York and New Jersey, there's a lot of athletes that come out of there that play lacrosse. It's just all about having that flat land that everybody just, you know, plays on. Yeah, the east side of the United States, the east coast, is a hotbed for lacrosse. Longwood controls another draw. Coming out of the timeout. We'll see what Coach Ferguson kind of drew up if they were going to be able to control that draw coming out of the timeout. And Ferguson, you know, joining the program late 2022, she has really helped establish a great culture for this team, especially last year, 4-12 and overall, 2-7 and in the Big South Conference. But again, that team, some would say even younger than this team is today. Ariana Tucci, we saw her score a goal not too long ago. She has a free position attempt right here, 5.52 remaining in the third quarter. Tucci passes it off. The shot is, or excuse me, the pass is wide. That's going to be the easiest turnover that Youngstown State will force all day. But now can they take advantage of it? And they need that momentum, especially with those cause turnovers. That has been the issue for Youngstown State having those turnovers or forcing them and being able to push your way downfield and have an opportunity. But this defense has not made it easy for this Penguins now in the second half. As we approach five minutes remaining here in the third quarter as the rain picks up once again here in Youngstown. It's been an ugly day, that's for sure. Spinning inside with it for the Penguins was Kreutzer. Looks to get rid of it. Passes wide. Possession will stay with YSU. Ava Kreutzer leading the Penguins today with three goals. Katie Grottenthaler has it now. She'll pass it off. 36 seconds on the shot clock. Pass was deflected. And Longwood's going to force their fourth turnover of the afternoon. They'll keep the possession. They'll now push it the other way. Looking to make this a five-goal lead. The rain's starting to pick up to, you know, it's been a drizzle most of the day, but it's starting to pick up now where you can start to see kind of blowing with the wind here today at the Cavelli Sports Complex. First outdoor home game of the season for Youngstown State. Their home opener was inside in the Watson and Trestle training site against Ohio State. Tucci tries to spin off the defender. Towards the middle, the shot and the goal. Ariana Tucci with her second goal here of the third quarter. Her second on the day, 
We'll take another look right here. Spun off the defender. Tried to get past her. She had a good look. She executed. Yeah, and that was nice by Tucci as well. You saw the back pedal, just a nice little spin, got the stick on the hip check, and that looked beautiful, especially Tucci being able to get two goals just in this third quarter alone. Lancers are really starting to turn things up. 3.55 to go in the third quarter. Tucci, now the fourth different Lancer who has scored multiple goals here today. Longwood fans and the team itself, they've been waiting to kind of break through. They've been in so many close games in the second half down the stretch here these last few games. They just haven't been able to finish it off. Now they're looking at a five goal advantage with the ball right now. If you're Longwood, you're gonna to look to keep the foot on the gas here. Especially when you go quick that allows all the gas to go your way especially with the penguins when when it's raining in these conditions that defense it starts to break down a little bit your vision isn't as clear and the lancers they're going to start to capitalize 50 seconds on the shot clock tucci with it once again we saw her score that last goal a few minutes ago it was back and forth early on but longwood has Really started to control this game in these last two quarters. It was tied at two after one quarter of play. The Lancers have outscored YSU 11 to 6 cents. That was a nice job by Stecker there, being able to get the stick up, nice deflection, and take it away. Kayla Stecker today for Youngstown State. Game high, five ground balls. She's caused two turnovers. She had a crew high in six ground balls. The last time out, that's way too easy of a turnover for the Penguins. Longwell to get it right back. And again, crucial mistake for the Penguins. They're going to try to execute quickly. That pass them for themselves is off the mark. Why she'll get it back. But again, Borkowski staying busy, agile and quick in the cage. Yeah, that was a save to Borkowski. I didn't see that. <laughs> Thought that one, I thought that was just a pass that was off the mark. But nonetheless, Borkowski with her fifth save of the day. It's always good to have multiple eyes everywhere. <laughs> Definitely. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Youngstown State looking to try to bridge a little bit of this gap as we head towards the fourth quarter. With it is Jade Shearer. She'll drive in. Her shot's wide to the left. YSU will keep possession. Hoffman has it behind the goal for YSU. 31 seconds on the shot clock. Grace run with it now. Run. Gets pushed out by the Longwood defense. And she loses it. And it bounces out right to the stick of McDonald. And she will quickly push it the other direction for Longwood. And McDonald got speed, just nice agility, being able to backpedal just around the defender. And again, you're going to see right here, double team, pass it out, and excellent execution. Youngstown State, nine turnovers today. Longwood has nine themselves. Both teams, 21 shots also today, but Longwood has found the back of the net five more times than the Penguins have. So, I mean, both teams are getting equal opportunities. Nice find inside the shot and the goal. Wide open was Kendra DiFilippo. Defensive miscue for the Penguins, and Longwood takes advantage right before the end of the third quarter. We'll take another look right here. DiFilippo got lost within the YSU defense. She puts it past the stick of Borkowski. That's DiFilippo's first goal of the day. Now for DiFilippo, I don't think she got lost in the Penguins defense. I think the Penguins defense lost her because you see what she was able to do. There were several defenders there, and they really just lost sight of her because, again, she had that back pedal on the far right, and she was able to just capitalize that off of a nice execution down the stretch. Filippo's first goal since February 24th when she scored against Kennesaw State. It's her second total goal of the season. 
Draw control advantage goes to Longwood. 17 seconds remain in the third quarter. Do they have another quick push in them? Holly Hill with it. She'll pass it to Riley McDonald. We'll see if they can get another clean look here. Five seconds remain in the quarter. They're going to pass it around, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Another strong one for Longwood. They outscore YSU 5-1. to one. As we ha now have just 15 minutes remaining, Longwood on top, 14 to eight. We'll be right back after this. You ready to meet the latest addition to the family? The money you saved us with auto owners helped make it all possible. It really is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Excuse me? Third best thing. Third best thing. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Siebert Keck Insurance in Youngstown if auto owners make sense for you. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Mercy Health, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Mercy Health, primary care for the universe of you. Visit mercy.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. Welcome back here to Youngstown State University. Fourth quarter about ready to begin here. Today's action between Youngstown State and Longwood. Anthony Romo, John will stop what's on the call. John, another strong quarter for Longwood. They lead 14 to eight. In that third quarter, they outscored YSU five to one. Yeah, and for Longwood, they are finding the right opportunities and their goal scorers are stepping up. And the great part about Longwood is there is a lot of different scores. It doesn't matter who it is, McDonald, Hill, Kate Smith, it doesn't matter. Emily Kate Smith, she can do it all. All of these Lancers can do anything that they can. So why is you? It's going to be really tough coming into this fourth quarter. Of course, anything's possible, but you got to you got to outscore your opponent by six goals here in the fourth quarter, when you've only scored eight within the first 45 minutes. Something's going to have to start heating up offensively. You're going to look for a defensive heat up as well and it's going to be who has the defensive stop Youngstown State they have to clamp up defensively in order to stop the Lancers offensive attack so the Penguins will get first possession here won't be surprised to see if YSU wants to start attacking quickly and start to put some pressure on Longwood but it all starts with the draw controls Longwood's controlled that category today 17 to 9 but a good job by Callie Vaudry of getting the ball there for Youngstown State. One category where Youngstown State has controlled is the ground balls, 11 to six. Yeah, and almost half of those have been with Kayla Stecker. She has five of them for the Penguins. Good look inside. Big collision, that's gonna be a turnover. YSU's gonna give it right back to Longwood here. That's a missed opportunity for the Penguins. as the rain continues to come down in bunches here today. But, you know, you said earlier, John, it could be worse, and it will be worse tomorrow. We'll be dealing with snow instead of the rain. So I guess you take what you can get at any given time, right? Yeah, especially, you know, the clocks are going to change tomorrow that as is well, true. which spring is right around the corner. And Longwood, if they can hold on here, for 13 minutes and more change, they're going to have a lot of momentum heading back onto their home field for their next matchup. They have Big South play coming up a few matches away. But this is a team that, like we said, they have the pieces. They have the goal scorers. They have a goalkeeper in Bridget Robinson who's continuing to gain experience. This is a team to watch out for, I'd say, in the Big South. 
YSU, another empty possession where they get close to the goal of Longwood, but it ends in a turnover. You just got to give credit to this defense for the Lancers. Well, you can see how tough the conditions really are. You saw Kreutzer there hit the deck, and that allowed the opportunity. And, you know, again, the field starts to get wet. You lose your footing just a little bit, and great job by the Lancers to be able to take it over. Another chance here for Longwood to add on to this lead. Their leading goal scorer today, Riley McDonald, with four goals. But we mentioned it during the third quarter. They have four different players who have scored multiple goals today, and they have two players with hat tricks. McDonald has those four goals, and Holly Hill has three. Make it seven players now for the Lancers that have scored. So the wealth has been spread. 40 seconds remain on the shot clock. Riley McDonald has it. She'll pass it off to the near side. Ball on the stick of Emily Kate Smith. You were talking about her earlier, John. She's done it all, both with goal scoring and assisting. Five total points today for Emily Kate Smith. Two goals, three assists. Yeah, in her career as well, she has 117 points in total, but now add that to her. That pass is a little bit too high, and that'll be a turnover. Youngstown State will get it back. But the Penguins are going to have to start converting these turnovers into goals. They want to build back here in this fourth quarter. Again, still a lot of time left. Anything is possible, but Youngstown State, they're going to have to cause a lot more turnovers to get more opportunities for them. Penguins, this is the first game of a three-game homestand. They'll be back home on Wednesday at noon when they host George Washington. Penguins with the possession there. Leading goal scorer today has been Ava Kreutzer, freshman with three goals. Lena Cox, the leading scorer on the season, has it currently. But an offensive foul will give it right back to the Lancers. We've seen YSU now three opportunities here early on in the fourth quarter, and they all end in turnovers. Well, again, that's, you can see it there, the physicality of both of these teams. You've been seeing a lot of players hitting the deck on the field, and that's been allowing each team to have opportunities. So just a few ticks under 11 minutes remaining, a yellow card given to Katie Grottenthal over the Penguins, so she'll have to check out. And you can start to sense the frustration. But there's still a lot of time to go here today for Youngstown State. All it takes sometimes is one goal to start to build some momentum. If you can start to control draws and create more and more opportunities, the door is still open. But the time, the farther it ticks down, the more it becomes the friend of Longwood. Holly Hill has it. The Lancers moving without the ball. Moving to a set. Emily Kate Smith over to Riley McDonald. We're going to have a timeout called by the head coach of the Lancers and Kyler Ferguson. And that'll take us to a timeout. Longwood on top, 14-8, to eight, looking to add to this lead when we return here from Youngstown. Thanks, everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. That's simple human sense. Ask Champion Insurance of Austintown in Austintown if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Yeah. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together, we are Youngstown State University. And now you know why. 
Welcome back here to the Cavelli Sports Complex on the campus of Youngstown State University. Anthony Romo, John Ostopowitz back on the call for the final stretch of our matchup here today between Youngstown State and Longwood. Lancers currently have possession with 66 seconds on the shot clock. Head coach Kyler Ferguson elected to call a timeout because I'm sure she really wants to find another goal right here that could honestly start to put the dagger in Youngstown State. A seven goal lead would be really hard to overcome here in 10 and a half minutes. Yeah, for the Lancers, that would be a statement piece. It would be able to allow them to solidify their offense and slowly start to salt this game away. They tried to quickly attack right there, but Paige Borkowski of Youngstown State was able to get the save, but she quickly turns it over. Numbers for Longwood driving inside the shot, and another save for Borkowski. Ball's still on the turf, and she'll able to come down with it. That was a golden opportunity for Sophia Pass of the reigning Big South Freshman of the Year. But Borkowski, full extension, able to get the save for the Penguins. Yeah, and you talk about Sophia Passa. Not only was she the Big South Freshman of the Year honors, but how about two-time Big South Freshman of the Week as well as all Big South honorable mention. And last year, she started all 16 matches, so there's a lot of accolades already for Passa. Under 10 minutes remaining here in our fourth quarter. Longwood substituting defensively. Lena Cox working on the right side for Youngstown State. Cox, two goals today. Coming from behind and poking that one free is the defense of the Lancers, and they will now push it in the other direction. It's just been one of those halves where Longwood is controlled in all facets. Miranda Helfenbein coming from behind, and she was able to free it up, and the Lancers have possession once again. Again, that was just a nice play by Helfenbein. There were three defenders. She came out of nowhere and caught, you know, caught Cox off guard. And nice execution by the Lancers. Holly Hill working behind the net for Longwood. So now pass it back out in front. And that's the thing that, especially when you're in the fourth quarter and you have a lead and the clock starts ticking, especially in the sport of lacrosse, the team on top has such an advantage with the shot clocks being 90 seconds long. You continue to play keep away. And in the blink of an eye, you've taken a minute and a half off the clock. And that's what makes it tough, especially if you want to try and form a comeback when, you know, the opposition is really starting to control that time of possession and just a lot of different looks, especially for Youngstown State. But crucial errors have, have well been the Penguins' Achilles heel throughout the season. Why she was able to force a turnover there on that Longwood possession, but they ended up giving it right back to the Lancers. But the Lancers will give it right back. I think if you're Youngstown State as well, we've seen a, a few turnovers here in the fourth quarter. But when you're trailing like this, you have to start taking opportunities. So you might see that turnover number rise, but it's not necessarily that the Penguins are doing anything bad. They're just trying to force it because this clock's starting to not become their friend. Nice pass inside to Garrett. Spins off the defender. The shot saved by Robinson. That was a really good look for Allie Garrett, but she just was not able to convert. Garrett, as a freshman last year, was a really big piece of Youngstown State's team that was able to make it to the Mid-American Conference Tournament. We're going to have a foul called on Jenna Cook. She does not agree with that call. But the clock continues to roll here under seven minutes remaining in our fourth quarter. Longwood on top, 14 to eight. Holly Hill trying to drive on the defender. Youngstown State doubles her up and she'll have to get rid of it. We mentioned the Penguins will be back at home on Wednesday when they host George Washington. Longwood will return home to face off with George Mason also on Wednesday. Filippo has one goal so far here in the second half. She'll pass off inside. Good shot and another goal. Emily Kate Smith adds on to her excellent afternoon. Emily Kate Smith now three goals to go along with three assists. We'll take another look at the replay right here. Had an opening right in front of the goal, and she capitalized. And Longwood, John, they're closing in now on their first win of the season. 
They really are. And with that, you know, dagger by Emily Kate Smith, that was a statement. You saw the power on that swing. And we've seen it a lot. Emily Kate Smith, when she gets in the position where she knows that window is starting to close, she hammers that in there. And a great opportunity by the Lancers. And this is what they're going to do now. They're going to try and get turnovers and control that margin and slowly start to chip away at that clock and have that first win of the season if they can control it. Katie Grottenthaler controls that draw for Youngstown State. The ball bounced right out into her stick. Rolled my tongue on that word a little bit there. A little uh, alliteration there. <laughs> <laughs> Six minutes remain now in the fourth quarter. Kreutzer, her shot, and that's a goal. Penguins quickly answer. Ava Kreutzer continues her excellent afternoon. Now four goals. For the freshmen, for the Penguins, we'll take another look right here. If you're Youngstown State, you start to think, where has that quick score been all day long? Kreutzer now a new career high for her four goals here today. Yeah, and in the game of lacrosse, this is where all of your you know scoring is going to come, especially in the last minutes of the fourth quarter because the adrenaline starts to really pay its toll, especially when you know that you're down. They're going to try and cut the deficit and at least make this one close and maybe try and chip away and make it close or even pull away. But again, that's what it is in the fourth quarter. They love those last second opportunities. Kreutzer now nine goals on the season. She's one goal away from tying her season total coming into today with four goals. Tied for the game high with Riley McDonald of Longwood who has four goals of her own. As we near five and a half minutes remaining, Longwood and Julia Coding was able to control that draw. A quick substitution for the Lancers as Ariana Tucci will check back in. 65 seconds on the shot clock. So you start to get those situations we talked about, John. If Longwood wanted to hold on to this for the entire shot clock, they'd be down to just over four minutes remaining at the end of it. That's where the cause turnovers have to come in. You have to you know, get out in front when they're holding it and cradling it and trying to keep it away from Youngstown State. It's all about getting physical and getting in there. Maybe not that, not, you know, <laughs> maybe not that physical, but of course, right idea. McDonald passes it behind the net. As Longwood will play a little bit of keep away. Looking for a good shot still, though that one was freed away from the stick. It's still bouncing, and possession will now go to YSU. Four minutes, 24 seconds remain. Longwood on top, 15 to nine. Both teams with just one goal here in their fourth quarter. YSU looking to continue to chip into this deficit. Low shot, past the net. Possession will stay with the Penguins. Four minutes now to go here in our fourth quarter. This is where the Penguins have to go quick here. But again, this Lancer's defense is not going to make it easy. But again, wide open look. But Grottenthaler's shot was off the mark. Why she had numbers there with two Lancer defenders on the turf. Grottenthaler drove inside. Her shot was just a little bit wide. And we're going to have another timeout called by Coach Kyler Ferguson with three minutes and 41 seconds remaining here in our fourth and final quarter of the day. We'll give another quick game reset. Longwood, 15 goals on 24 shots here this afternoon. Youngstown State, nine goals on 26 shots. So the Penguins have had more opportunities than Longwood has. But that's where you give all the credit to Bridget Robinson. Ten saves today for Robinson to just nine goals allowed, 53% save percentage. And as you take a look at Rob Harris, the head coach of Youngstown State, trying to talk to his side, the Penguins 10 draw controls today while Longwood has 18. Coach Harris, this year coming in in July 2023 was his official start date that he started for the program and he has himself a lot of accolades, especially 
having led the NCAA Division II Davenport Panthers women lacrosse team for nine seasons. And that's, you know, a long time to be a head coach. So he has a lot of experience, you know, and he's able to bring that to a young program. You know, lacrosse for Youngstown State, it's a very new program for athletics. And it's great that he's able to come in with all this experience and coach a very young team and make a definable program here at Youngstown State. Yeah, we were talking earlier in the broadcast. Longwood had lost at home to Old Dominion back on February 28th, 28th 11-7. That Old Dominion team is led by former Youngstown State head coach and Teresa Walton. She was the inaugural head coach for this program the first two seasons before taking the Old Dominion job. And there's been a lot of turnover, kind of year after year for Youngstown State ever since this program's first year of action back in 2021. It was a tough start from the beginning with the coronavirus still being dealt with here all over the world. They've tried to kind of reach some, some stability and hopefully Coach Harris can be here for the long run in Youngstown and build this Penguins program into a team that is one of the teams that beat year in, year out in the MAC. Right, Romo, and we've talked about it a lot. College athletics, what's so great about it is all athletes have the opportunity to, they can go where they want to, especially with the transfer portal, NIL, having different opportunities and it gives them a lot of different looks that they maybe didn't have before. And, you know, everybody gets an opportunity to go where they would like and make great programs with great coaches. Ball in the stick of Bridget Robinson. Longwood, like you mentioned, kind of a rough year last year, John. But if they can get this first win, hold on here today, start to build some momentum. We'll see if that can help them out returning on their home field next week. We'll see if they can start to build a little bit of a win streak because they've been in a lot of games this season. If you talk about that one point loss to one goal loss to Kent State on Thursday, that was a game that was close all the way down to the wire. They just couldn't pull it out. So they could easily have at least one win on the season. But now they're under three minutes away from effectively clinching that first win. And if they are able to clinch that first win, what a monumental win by them. I mean, coming into Youngstown, Ohio, being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a very heavy offensive attack and the defense being able to step up. Shot by Garrett off balance, and Allie Garrett finds the back of the net as she fell to the seat of her pants. Garrett's able to get up, and Youngstown State not going away just yet. We'll take another look right here. Garrett finding the opening right in front of the goal. Got tangled up with the Lancers defender and Miranda Helfenbein, but she was still able to get her first goal of the afternoon. That'll make it 15 to 10 now. For Garrett, that's her sixth goal of the season. She was assisted by Ava Kreutzer. Kreutzer, five total points today, four goals and also that one assist. So now the Penguins are able to get in double-figure scoring, down by five, Youngstown State. It helps out for the Penguins that there is a foul on the goal, so it's like an and one per se. Why is she will get it right back? A chance here to get back into this deficit. But the time is really starting to tick as we approach two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Kreutzer will pass off a shot. Off the mark. It's another good look for Youngstown State. Penguins will retain possession. Well, Kreutzer was trying to find Grottenfaller down the stretch in the middle there and just off lines, a little bit too much. But again, Lancer's playing physical. That'll be Longwood possession here. And they're going to quickly push it towards the Youngstown State end. They're going to look to potentially add on to this lead. Pass it around. They hold on to it. Game clock and shot clock are separated by just five seconds. Pass it over to DiFilippo. Now the Lancers will play keep away here. Some good performances on both ends. Say so if we had if we picked a player of the game, it would be Emily Kate Smith today for Longwood. Three goals with three assists. For six total points, Youngstown State 
Freshman Ava Kreutzer really led the way today for the Penguins. Career high four goals for her. Back to back games with career highs. She had a career high three goals last time out against Stetson. But she set a new mark now in back to back games. That pass is a little bit too high for the Lancers. That'll be a turnover. Youngstown State will get it back. They're going to try to push it here with 43 seconds remaining in regulation. As we just now reach the 2 o'clock hour. Penguins trying to move it quickly. Turn it back over. Longwood will have it. 26.7 seconds remaining and a yellow card given to Allie Garrett. That'll effectively be the end of her afternoon. It's been a tough game for the Penguins. You can see how much they want to get back in it, but again, it's going to be tough. So Longwood will finish the afternoon a woman up. It looks like she was going to call it off here. As we the final 11 seconds will roll off of the clock. Longwood is going to be able to get their first victory of the season. They're going to move to 1-4 and four overall. Youngstown State is going to fall to 0-6 oh after one last push. And it's going to be one last goal for the Lancers. That is the cherry on top. To end this afternoon for Longwood, we'll take one more look at it. They want to decide to move quickly at the very end. And Di Filippo will get her second goal of the afternoon. 16 to 10 will be your final. Longwood, your winner here today on a very rainy day in Youngstown. Any final thoughts, John? Romo, you talked about her just a little bit. Emily Kate Smith, I know you said that's your player of the game, and I completely agree. Had an assist on that one, and rightfully so. She has had herself a day. Yet another assist to her total. She's such a great facilitator for this Lancers team. So that'll do it. Here from the Cavelli Sports Complex, Longwood, your winners today, 16-10. to 10. Young Sun State will return home on Wednesday to host George Washington. For John Ostopwitz, I'm Anthony Romo saying so long here from Youngstown.